1923, the year my husband, Prince Rainier, was born, his father, Prince Pierre, offered this theater as a home and sanctuary to a group of young dancers who had suddenly met with financial difficulties whilst creating a revolution in the ballet throughout Europe. The man who ran the company, Serge Diaghilev, came from Leningrad. Of course, when he was there, it was still St. Petersburg. Diaghilev's company, the Ballet Russe, included two other emigres from Leningrad, the dancer Nijinsky and the choreographer Fokin, both of whom graduated from the same ballet school. George Balanchine, another Russian, came to the Ballet Russe in 1924 on his way to start what is now the New York City Ballet and to create, in a large part, the tradition American ballet lovers have just cause to be proud of. Balanchine, too, graduated from the same school as Nijinsky and Fokin. The film you're going to see is about the children of Theatre Street in Leningrad. They are the protagonists. But as their predecessors have demonstrated, perhaps the greater protagonist is the school they go to. Let's discover together, shall we, what makes this possible. And most of all, we would like to thank the children for letting us tell their story, especially Alec Timushin, 13, Angelina Armiskaya, 11, and Lena Voronsova, who will graduate this year. It was called the Imperial Ballet School of Russia in the age when the city was St. Petersburg. If the greatness of a school is measured by the greatness it produces, then it may be the greatest school of ballet of all time. Its children have grown up to change the course of ballet history. Anna Pavlova, Nijinsky, Balanchine. For over a hundred years, the street by which you enter here has been known throughout the world of dance as Theater Street. Today, the city is Leningrad 
and the school is called the Vaganova Choreographic Institute, after the gifted Soviet teacher Agrippina Vaganova. It has maintained its reputation as a source of brilliant dancers throughout this century. Its recent graduates dominate the ballet, not only in the Soviet Union, but throughout the world. Today is the day of the entrance examination. Every year, thousands of children apply to study here. Twenty will be accepted. These children have come from all over the Soviet Union and beyond, drawn by a love of ballet, by the worldwide reputation of the school, and by the dream of adding their names to the list of famous dancers who have been nurtured here. For the few who will be chosen, today is a turning point. To be a dancer in Russia means a chance for honor, for wider life, perhaps a place in history. The greatest dancers are privileged citizens and are idolized by the Russians. Most of these children have been recommended by their teachers or found by the leaders of youth groups. A few have never danced before. They're between nine and 12 years old. They come prepared to commit themselves to a life more intense and special than they can possibly hope to imagine. A life that will set them apart from the rest of the world for as long as they dance. The judges are looking for a dancer's body, one with long limbs, arched insteps, an unusual ability to turn out and elevate the leg and for a light, strong jump. The children's bodies are judged against a mathematical index describing the ideal dancer. A computerized list of measurements predicts the proportion of the leg to the torso when the child is fully grown. Talent is considered worth measuring only when it occurs in the right body, and the index doesn't measure the child's desire to dance. For the parents as well as the children, this moment could change everything. If the children are accepted, they will have a chance that life offers to very few. They will also be totally separated from their parents for months, and in some cases, years at a time. Acceptance means sacrifices for everyone. Rejection means a dream ended, like the closing of a door. Thank you. 